we're talking about how citizen scientists are rapidly generating big distribution data, a lesson from the Ariwa Atlas team under the Nigeria so, um, Atlas project. It's based on the effort of the many citizen scientists in Nigeria, particularly the Ariwa, Northern Nigeria, who have been contributing data to the project. Ariwa Atlas team is under the Nigerian Bed Atlas project. The Nigerian Bed Atlas project is a national project under the African Bed Atlas project with the aim of mapping the distribution of birds across Nigeria. NIBAP started in 2015 with just three management team. From right to left, we have Dr. Ibande, we have um, Dr. Talatu, and then Professor Utterson. Dr. Um, Ivandi was the pioneer um, project manager of the NIBAP. Currently, Dr. Talatu is the manager with Professor Utterson coordinating the activities of the um, Nigerian Bird Atlas project and the African Bird Atlas program at large. So when NIBAP started, the project appears to be um, ambitious, but strategic as well. NIBAP thought of a way of getting more atlases, more people to atlasing into the field. So to do this, NIBAP employed a strategy, the bed club strategy. In the bed clubs, before establishing the bed clubs, NIBAP map out the distribution of um, where graduates from Aplori are in Nigeria. And then NIBAP tried to set up bed clubs across these regions. And these bed clubs are made up of skilled, um, <coughs> trained ornithologists from the AP Leventis Ornithological Research Institute, Aplori, as well as an audience, the general public members of um, family and friends and even students from natural sciences and other departments in universities. So the idea of the bed clubs is matching um, the skill with the unskilled or <clears throat> in order to um, create awareness, in order to um, train more people into atlasing. Okay. So currently there are about over 20 bird clubs in Nigeria. And these bird clubs act as training ground. They plan bi-weekly or monthly outings with their members in order to sharpen their skills in bird identification in citizen science. So through this, the bird club assists in data quality control as more members of the bird clubs are getting to know more about birds and be able to identify birds and participate in the project. So what um, the bird clubs do is that competent members of the bird clubs are being pushed, are being uh, sent to Atlas teams. We have a number of Atlas teams in the country. I mean, three major Atlas teams in the country, the Ariwa Atlas team, the Southwest Atlas team, SWAT, and then the Southeast South South Atlas team. Here is the map showing a coverage map of the Nigerian Bed Atlas project showing the different Atlas teams. The Ariwa Atlas team is represented in gray with the largest coverage in Nigeria. And then we have the Southwest Atlas team represented in the light gray and the Southeast South South Atlas team, CSAT. So uh, the table one below shows um, the number of pentax that have cards in each category. So um, the one card, two cards, three cards, four cards, and then the pentax covered in the whole of Nigeria. The total cards submitted, full protocol cards, FP, and then the total species recorded since the beginning of the project in 2015. 
as we can see, um, there has been an increase in um, data submission in all the different categories, one card, two card, three card, four cards, and then the number of pen cards covered all across the years. In Nigeria, we have about 11,088 11, pen cards in Nigeria. So, so also with the total number of species recorded. In 2015, there was only 202 species that have been submitted to the database. 2016, 571. And currently, the database has about 935 species recorded in Nigeria. All right, this a time series analysis showing um, the surveyed pentads in Nigeria in each quarter, quarterly from 2015 to 2015. 16. So as we can see, there has been an increase in the coverage in the number of pentads submitted to the project, to the database. Even though there has been some declines in some of the months, in some of the quarters, I mean. And here you will see 2020 having a sharp decline. And this decline in 2020 will be attributed to the COVID pandemic. There were less atlases submitting data to the database. There was no much effort in 2020 as a result of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, um, here we see the number of cards submitted in each quarter. It's showing similar pattern with 2020 having um, a sharp decline due to COVID, and then it picked up. Then we have the number of species submitted um, on a quarterly basis since the beginning of the project. We can see a sharp increase in the number of species that has been recorded. And this, um, number has maintained an asymptote, as you can see, even though there has been some um, zigzag pattern of rise and fall in the coverage, in the number of species recorded. So, um, and this can be as a result of um, the presence of migratory species. As you can see here, there has been a, a, an increase in the last quarter of 2015, due to the presence of migratory species, Palearctic migrants, as well as the intra-African migrants, they are present during this period, contributing to the total number of species that have been submitted. Likewise, in the first quarter of the following year, so the peak um, number of species is being recorded in the last quarter and then the first quarter. This has been the trend. Last quarter of the year, first quarter of New Year, with the presence of Palearctic migrants and then with the presence of intra African migrants, majorly in the last quarter. There has been a decline as well in 2020 due to the impact of COVID 19. So, what has the question is what has contributed to the increase in coverage? in number of species, in number of pentads that have been covered, number of cards that have been submitted to the database. NIBAP has employed a number of strategies. NIBAP conducts um, capacity building seminar and workshops across universities, across schools in Nigeria. trying to create awareness about the project and to go to Atlas into data submission. NIBAB also have ambassadors and representatives across the country, regional representatives. NIBAB organize monthly webinars. Tomorrow happens to be one of the day of these webinars. And this has been consistent every month. And then NIBAB usually conduct challenges and competition 
like the Home Pentad Challenge, which begins January to December every year. And individuals with the largest, with the highest number of um, Pentad submitted are being uh, awarded prizes. Likewise, with end of the year competition, the bedding big day, December bedding, NIBA also have social media handles. These social media handles have been very instrumental to publicity, to creating more awareness about Nigerian Bed Atlas project. So the Ariwa Atlas team um, recently conducted a um, outing in the northeastern region of Nigeria, collecting data, bed distribution data for the Nigerian Bed Atlas project. So to do this, the team followed the BEDMAP protocol, which is the um, protocol the Nigerian Bed Atlas follow, as well as the African Bed Atlas project followed. To do this, um, observers make observation within pentad in a pentad scale. A pentad is, I've been measuring pentads. A pentad is a nine kilometer by nine kilometer grid, five minute by five minutes. As the name implies, pentad five, five minute by five minutes. So to submit data, Atlas has expected to spend a minimum of two hours surveying birds or maximum of five days covering as much habitat as possible to submit a full protocol card. Else it is recorded as ad hoc submission. So on the 13th July, the Ariwa Atlas team embarked on their quarterly Atlassian expedition. And for this quarter, the second quarter of the year, the team, at last, the northeastern region of Nigeria, specifically um, Adamawa and Taraba states. So first thing in the morning, the team rise in the morning and assemble in a place to sort out, to strategize on the routes to follow, on the pentads to cover. And members are separated into groups, groups of two subgroups and each group are expected to cover at least three pentads, spending a minimum of two hours in each pentad to submit a full protocol card. So to get to the field, Atlas has faced a lot of barriers, crossing rivers, water bodies, hard terrain, thick vegetation, some are able to get boats to cross water bodies. Some cross the water bodies barefooted with their boats, carrying their boats in shallow water bodies. Okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid, eh? Jesus. Don't be afraid, just sit still. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, this is a, uh, the landscape view of the vegetation in Taraba State, where the Ariwa Atlas team were during the period of the expedition. Okay, so um, here we have number of Pentads that have been at last by the Ariwa Atlas team. The Ariwa Atlas team, they started in 2018 by um, a number of citizen scientists, a group of people who have um, shared interest in mapping biodiversity, mapping birds. So as we can see, there has been a trend over the years. There has been a trend with 2020 having a sharp decline, just as we have seen with the uh, Nigerian Bed Atlas data impact of COVID-19. And here we have the recent outing where the Atlas team covered over 
150 pentax, 162 pentax precisely. So this is the coverage map of the Nigerian Bed Atlas project just before the Atlas expedition embarked by the Ariwa Atlas team. And this is the coverage map just after uh, the expedition. So as we can see, there has been a massive data uh, submission to the database over 152, 162 pentads have been at last during a period of four days between 13 to 18 of July, 2022. Isn't that amazing? Okay, during the period of the Atlas, a total of 4,476 4, observations were made and 297 species were recorded in 68 families in 162 pentads. This is approximately 13,711 kilometers square that has been covered by the team a team of 22, 22 atlases. So the, this um, size, this um, particular, this uh, 162 pentads is equivalent to twice the size of one of the states in Nigeria, Ekiti state. And it's also about five times the size of Luxembourg, the country in the Europe. So that, that, that's massive. Uh, so during the period, the maximum number of species recorded in the pentad was 73. And then the lowest number of species recorded was 16 in pentad 09, 30, 11, 15 with this coordinate. So these are some of the field observation. Pinicious dove was um, the most frequently recorded species. And these are some of the observations during the Atlassian expedition. The orange-cheeked wax pit, the Goslings Mountain, Senegal, Tiki, Violet, Turaco, African Cuckoo, and many others. These are more of the field observations during- Hello. Yes. African Cuckoo, please. African- Cuckoo, Cuckoo. Hawk, please. Cuckoo Hawk, thank you very much. Thank you very much, bro. <clears throat> okay, so this table shows um, the 20 most frequently recorded bird species that were recorded during the Atlas expedition. Vinicius Dove was recorded uh, 106 times by different atlases, followed by red cheek cotton black, which is a resident species. So these are mostly um, resident species, except Abdin stock, which is an intra African migrant. There are more species. So, these are some of the cuckoos that were observed during the Atlas expedition. The cuckoos, for example, the classic cuckoo, follows the rain. And this is the time to um, observe the cuckoos in Nigeria, in some parts of Africa. So, there were eight different species of cuckoos that were recorded during this Atlas expedition. Black cuckoo was recorded only once. Jacobin cuckoo, six times. Um, Great spotted cuckoo was recorded seven times. And then in that order, classic cuckoo was recorded highest, 39 um, different um, records, different submissions of classic cuckoo. So these are some of the notable uh, migratory species that were observed during this uh, Atlas expedition. The Montagus Haria, Palit Haria, which were observed by one of the Atlasas, um, the name of Jalo, Mama Jalo. So Mama Jalo observed Palit Haria, a juvenile, a first year Palit Haria, and Montagus Haria. Three pipids, Eurasian Rhinec, 
were observed by um, one of the atlases, Mr. Ponyil. And this is very unusual as they arrive very early. So we have to contact uh, Mr. Ponyil to be sure that these were the species that were observed. And he confirmed that he knew what he saw, the Russian Rhinek, the three pipit. They were observed at a very close range of 20 meters. That was the Eurasian planet. And then the um, three pipit was observed between 20 and 40 meters uh, range. Other species that were recorded, other migratory species include the Collie sandpiper, the marsh sandpiper, the wood sandpiper. So the data generated by the Nigerian Bird Atlas project, the Ariwa Atlas team, doesn't just sit in the database. This data has been documented in regional uh, ornithological uh, bulletins, like the uh, Malimbus. So this is um, the, the, the gray part fiscal, which was uh, which has recorded an extension in its range, submitted by Mr. Ringim, Peterson, Ivande, Wende, and Ezekiel, sometimes in 2020. And we have um, the range extension of, and the first record of breeding of house parrot in Nigeria. So more observations are being made and more of these observations are being documented. So currently, we are working on some noteworthy bird records. We have submitted um, some noteworthy bird records, including the first record of the gray wartail in Nigeria. Okay, not just birds, um, not just birds, the Nigerian Bird Atlas project has inspired many other citizen science projects. Many of the, sorry for this. Oh, oh. Um. Uh oh, sorry for this. Okay, not just the birds. The Nigerian Bird Atlas project has inspired other uh, citizen science projects like the butterfly monitoring. And then Atlas has get to observe other biota in the field, butterfly, snakes, and all that. And Atlas has been, have been contributing a number of records to the iNaturalist all across. So this is, uh, one of the Atlas machines, the, the current the incumbent coordinator of the Ariwa Atlas team, Mr. Joseph Izan, who has been involved in birds as well as butterfly monitoring. And here is one of his records, the Jos Zulu. The Jos Zulu is a butterfly species that is endemic to the Jos Plateau in Nigeria. So there are other stories, there are stories from the field, we the atlases get to um, meet the local communities and then get to hear more about their practices. So this man is a farmer and he was narrating to me that trees in his region are cut down in order to deter birds. So birds have been destroying his, their farmlands and what they do is to cut down the trees and unfortunately, when they do that, the, the um, land becomes not fertile anymore. And this is a farmland next to this picture that employs the use of non-toxic chemical deterrents. He narrated that when they started using the non-toxic chemical deterrents for birds, the um, farmland become more fertile and the plants become more greener. 
and the harvest bumper. So more stories from the field. So here is a variable sunburst that was killed for meat by kids. This was observed during our last expedition. So imagine what meat, what meat in this small bird. So um, with citizen science project with um, bird clubs all across Nigeria with um, foundations like the Better Earth Foundation that we have here in the George Plateau, the kids are being, um, are being taught about birds and biodiversity. And we believe the story is going to change sooner rather than later. And this has been attributed to the Nigerian Bird Atlas project that have inculcated um, the awareness of birds biodiversity through the Nigerian Bird Atlas, through the project and other um, citizen science projects like the um, butterfly mapping done by Mr. Joseph Iza. So let's hear from the citizen scientists that have been involved with the Ariwa Atlas team to make this uh, record-breaking expedition from 13 to 18 of July, 2022. Let's hear from Joseph Izang, the coordinator of the Ariwa Atlas. Hello everyone, my name is Joseph, Joseph Izang. I am a nature enthusiast and also a member of the Ariwa Atlas team. I have been a member of this team since its inception and uh, currently I serve as the coordinator of the team. I joined the team because it gives me an avenue to meet people with similar interests as myself and also make a, a significant contribution to sciences through the submission of uh, my observation to different citizen science projects. One of the citizen science projects that the Arewa Atlas team has been contributing hugely to is the Nigerian Bird Atlas project. For example, our recent outing bird expedition to the northern, northeastern part of Nigeria, whereby we recorded, we submitted thousands of records uh, um, in, hundred, in hundreds of checklists. And uh, personally, I recorded 136 bird species, including two lifers to my, to my list. So um, this is how much uh, Arewa Atlas team is doing to, uh, to, to, to understand, to contribute to sciences through the submission of uh, uh, observations uh, in the field. It can be very challenging out there in the field, especially when you go out to Atlas in um, a place where you've never been to. But then at the same time, it's interesting because you get to see things that usually you won't see around you and also experience other people's culture. And then you are sharing this knowledge and then it's making progress in sciences. Thank you. Ariwa Atlas team is a group of young, vibrant nature lovers and bed watchers. I was privileged to join their outing in September 2020 and the just concluded uh, outing in July with over 162 pens that covered. There's one thing that's assured with this group. It promises um, you adventure and you become more aware of nature around you and most especially the interesting birds around the northern parts of Nigeria. Thank you. Hi, I am Hafiz Abdullah Adam, active member of Ariwa Atlas team, an Atlas team from the northern part of Nigeria, which has an extraordinary methodology of data collection that has a great impact in generating very big distribution of biological data by through the help of student scientists. As of recent, there has been an increasing contribution from the public in the scientific studies. For a long time, biodiversity conservation have suffered enough from the shortage of data due to lack of pound and time and also shortage of skills personnel. But with the integration of student science, data of biological diversity across the world can easily be generated. Our Atlas team have helped me a lot because Thank to, uh, thank, to, thank to them and uh, thank and to Nubab because they give me chance to travel across the north. Because of that, I have now uploaded more than 300 bird and butterflies species and other biological plants to iNaturalist and to Virtual Museum uh, as well. It gave me the opportunity 
to sow and record new species in my life. Uh, well, the actual major challenge to student science and to bat to Arrow Atlas team is the security challenges here in Nigeria, especially down here in the north. That, that's the actual challenge for me. Uh, and for Arrow Atlas team, actually, I'm seeing them as the future of the Nigerian Bird Atlas project because an Atlas team that can Atlas more than 150 panthers. scientist I got to know the Arewa Atlas team through a friend and well this is my first outing and it has been amazing I got to know a lot of new people in new places and lots of birds um I love nature and I uh, I love to explore so this is just an opportunity for me to explore for me to gain knowledge and all that. Um, Ariwa Atlas team is, uh, is amazing, it's quite amazing. Um, I would like to say thank you to my friends, to those who introduced me to the Ariwa Atlas team. Thank you. Okay, yeah, my name is Konil Abunemia, uh, Monique and Tigers, and also member of Ariwa Atlas team. Yeah, my experience with Ariwa Atlas team has actually been very interesting, so not without challenges. Uh, it has also helped me to improve my my bird knowledge and also expose me to different uh, birds across the education type. So the insecurity issue in Nigeria currently is actually very challenging and some of the pointers are even not accessible. So my name is Dixon. We are here out again for another atlasing expedition as part of the citizen science um, group that uh, atlasing birds for NIBAP. And it's been a good thing out here. I know it's a kind of quite tedious work to do, walking around the whole pentads of nine by nine kilometers, trying to get as much beds as you would get. I mean, it's interesting, and I look forward to another time of getting and recording beds distributions in Nigeria. Hello, I'm Abdul Hamid Ibrahim, a citizen scientist for Nigeria Bed Atlas projects, specifically under the Ariwa Atlas team. In the just concluded second quarter outing for the year, the expedition was in Adamawa and Taraba states. In Adamawa state, where I specifically participated, the environment is a savanna grassland with few patches of woodland, and the people were accommodating, which made bed atlasing easier and interesting. We recorded a number of species, including the site of a large number of abdim stocks, which are breeding migrants from East Africa. I also recorded two new species I haven't seen on the field before, which are the Egyptian plovers and four-banded sangros. We hope that more funds will be released to citizen scientists so that it will make mobility easier to assess pensas early enough to cover for the day. Thank you. Okay, that was Mr. Ibrahim Abdul Hamid. Okay, this is a tweet from one of the Atlas Atu sharing his first experience with Ariwa Atlas team. Mr. Oposio Emmanuel, who recorded 143 species and new species to his list. That is another tweet from the Nigerian Bed Atlas project with uh, an update of the recent Atlas by the Ariwa Atlas team. Okay, there are more stories, past stories from the Ariwa Atlas team since 2018. So I can share these stories for you to read and enjoy. And this is the Newman team, the team that last one of the states. Um, Adamo State uh, with the project manager of the Nigerian Bed Atlas project in middle and others. And then this is the other team, the team that Atlas part of Taraba, Taraba State, which is uh, one of the states in Nigeria with a very big landmass uh, with the um, project manager of the NIBAP as well. So then I uh, would like to acknowledge the local communities who were very accommodating to the Atlasers during this period of during the period of the expedition. 
or with the citizen scientists as well, who have been there on the field, recording birds, harsh weather, bad terrain, and all that. The Ariwa last team at large, Aplori, for their constant support, particularly the Nigerian Bird Atlas project, and then the Swiss Ornithological Institute, who has been very supportive to the Nigerian Bird Atlas project and the Ariwa Atlas team indirectly. Thank you very much. So here I end with the <coughs> words of Stephen Spellback. Stories don't have a middle or an end anymore. We usually have the beginning that never stops beginning. So this is just the beginning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Umbule Mador. I volunteer with the Nigerian Bird Atlas Project, and I am a member of the Ariwa Atlas team. The Atlas trip to Adamawa State was a very, very special one for me because it exposed some of the challenges that comes with atlasing. The most challenging experience for me was having to cross over from Perry to Sebi Wambula. Don't be afraid. Uh, eh? It was quite an adventure. Don't be afraid. Just sit still. The adventure came and evolved like this. Eh? Grey Prantico and Black Belly Bustard. Those two species were a sight to behold. Please do well to join a bed club or Atlas team around you today and contribute to the project while having fun and appreciating nature as well. Thank you.